Okay, before I can put the head on, I have to reassemble my piston. As you can see, I've got it all cleaned up here. I kind of used a little bit of emery cloth on the wrist pin here, so it should should smooth, run in there real nice and smooth. So, let's see. Yep, that was pretty tough. Now it's got these little Teflon wrist pin retainers, is what they call them. Instead of the uh, clips like a OS engine has, or Enya for that matter. It's just these little Teflon discs that go in there. So I'm going to oil this piston up. Get it all nice and lubed up. Look to see which side of this is chamfered to accept the connecting rod. So this side will face forward and it also has a dot here denoting that that's the forward position. So let's pull oil in our cylinder here. Remembering which way that goes. Now, I'm not really sure, not concerned about which way the ring gap goes. Because it's going to reseed anyway. Oh man. I hate it when that happens. Sometimes that happens. The little retainers want to come out, so you got to be kind of careful. So here's the front. And as you can see, just went in nice and smooth. I'm going to engage it here on the connecting rod. Move the connecting rod down, to bottom dead center. And attach my head screws. Well, I guess I could have actually almost just installed those after the fact. Those tubes are pretty loose fitting on this engine. Now I can apply my torque here. And I'm only torquing with basically forefinger and thumb with the short end of this key. That'll keep me from being able to overstrip it because there's no way I can put enough force on this thing in this manner using this technique to strip those screws, but it's good enough to be the torque for that. Okay, it's like Final shot of oil back here. Put our back plate on. I'm deviating a little bit from my normal torque. Feels good. Push rods for these, there's not a right or a left, but they are tapered. The tapered end goes up towards the top so it can engage in the rocker arm. Now I don't know which one of these rocker arms was which. Doesn't really matter because I'm going to be resetting the timing anyway. So. Make sure I get that push rod engaged in there. Put this pin pin in here. Actually, let me roll that in this oil here that's dripped out. I 
think you have to rotate this through to the bottom dead center to get that to fit in there. I'm not going to really put any kind of real extreme torque on these at all because the last thing I want is these to not come out again. It's not quite lining up right. Should just slide in. There it goes. The rocker cover is going to keep those things from coming out anyway. So. There we go, now the rocker arms are installed. Next thing would probably be put our carburetor on. Move this screw here. Of course, there's a leg on the top of the bottom. Top. Guy. Oh wow, where did that come from? Wow, that's interesting. This carb the o ring just kind of barely fits in a little indentation there instead of recessing into the carb like other Sato engines. That's probably a, something they upgraded. Found it was not an ideal design. Carbs installed. Doesn't feel like it's got any compression at all. And that's probably because maybe these were swapped, or obviously, anytime you take the head apart, you gotta reset the valves. So, brass collar on here. any prop, just something to put on here so I can rotate this thing through. Just quickly grab my number 10 wrench. Yeah, it's got no compression at all. But we'll remedy that. When I set the timing on my engines, I've got numerous sets of little feeler gauges, but I like to use this set that came with an old OS engine because it comes with two. Uh, one I think is a .01 or .04, I can't really read it anymore. And that's what I use to set my valve with, and then one's a .1 millimeter uh, that I use as my no-go gauge. Sato. Feel gauges are all point one, and they say just set it like that, but I kind of like to set it so that that won't go in there. That's why I call it my no-go gauge. So, and this thing is, that exhaust valve is, is holding that valve down right now. So now I've got that. I want to adjust this so it's just starting to pinch that. Just starting to pinch that 0 0.04 or whatever that is. It's a little bit too tight there. That's too tight. Actually, I guess I can try and do it like this. This one. Let's drop that one. Let's see if my Sato gauge will go in there. Sato gauge goes in, but I have to really push it, so that's good. That's fine. I like that. Now let's see. The 
take down of his leg here. That's yeah, way, way open also. Starting to pinch there. Let's hold it, tighten that up. That feels good. Now we're not going to have any compression still because I don't have my glow plug in there. So let's put my glow plug in real quick and see if I've got compression now. Compression restored now. I don't know what kind of compression this engine had to begin with, but I mean, it doesn't feel great. But a lot of times, after a, a complete tear down and disassembly like this, what I'll do is I'll put one of those heavy hubs on here or something and take it out to my electric starter because there's a little bit of oil in there, and I'll just hit it with the electric starter, and that kind of helps get all the parts moving again, distributes that oil, and brings the compression up, and it'll be easier to start. But yeah, it's it's got compression now so it was just maybe when I put those rocker arms on I had them reversed and they had been kind of sort of set uh, so if they were reversed and the settings were off that would have resulted in one of the valves being stuck down all the time and that's why there was no compression so valves are set and put the valve rocker covers on and ready to run it